Well, because of the universality of media, it's almost hard to judge what an average person is and how many hours they interact with media. Um, this could be anywhere from a few hours of day collectively all the way up to every single waking moment because as you know some people wake up with smartphones and go to bed and they have their smartphone right next to them. So it is affected by people's level of interest in the media, what topics that they're caring about at the time, but also it's affected by things like geography and access. How much readily available media is there to people? So it all depends. Um, everything from a few hours all the way up to every single moment. Some studies have shown that children in particular um, interact with media and some type of medium up to 10 hours of their day. So it depends on where you are, what you're interested in, and how much access you have. Absolutely. People see media whether they like it or not. People see media and don't realize that they're being affected by it. 24-7, we are bombarded by messages from various sources, different types of media, radio, television, film, internet access, and depending on your level of interest shows how much you will connect with a particular media outlet. If you think about the concept of cognitive dissonance, where people tend to stay away from information that they don't find that aligns with their attitudes, there's a flip side to that. So if people are interested in a particular topic, they frequent those media that feature those topics more often. People could also be limited to media by their jobs. So if they're in a job situation where they have to disconnect from access for hours at a time, like a doctor or somebody like that, then they're disconnected from that particular world and have a tendency to reconnect as soon as they possibly can. So it depends again on access and the people's jobs and their functions and their level of interest. Well, from a day-to-day -day basis, the media is there to help people feel that they're a bigger part of their community, their country, their world. Uh, and it helps them make decisions that are potentially better ones in their lives. So they'll seek out information, again, that they feel that they can relate to in an effort to be part of this bigger system. One of the main positive effects of interacting with the media is the ability to be educated, and education is power. It's power to be informed, it's power to make better decisions in your life, and to be a much bigger part of a community. It's also a way to be connected to people that you would not necessarily know from all over the world. So the universality of media is the most ultimate expression of being a part of a global community. One of the things that everyone interacting with the media should consider is the quality of the particular media outlet. Because of technology, there's an easy way for anybody that would like to, to put up messages online, so to speak. So remember, look at quality media outlets as opposed to somebody that may be just sharing an opinion. They may have the same opinion as you, but it doesn't mean that they're following any kind of journalistic integrity or in journalistic style. There's also an issue of oversaturation of messaging. It'll be interesting to find out many, many years down the road as the media continues to grow, where as humans we get to a certain point where we start to shut down messages by sheer volume. So misinformation, oversaturation of messaging, and things along those lines are what are the negative qualities of the media. Well, there are things that have not changed about the media over time and things that have changed. So let's look at what's been constant the whole time. The purpose and the content of media messages has not changed. If you go way back in history and look at how the Greeks promoted the Olympics, you look at the invention of the printing press where people could see words on a paper for the very first time in a book form or even in a daily newspaper form, accompanied by the town crier someone whose job was literally to stand on a street corner and ring a bell and scream messaging out. These are all communication channels. At their core, the media wants to inform. They want to educate. They also want to persuade. That has not changed over many thousands of years. What has changed is the delivery mechanism. It's gotten quicker, it's gotten faster, and it's gotten instantaneous. So we're going to see a continued evolution of these delivery mechanisms, but the intent of the media has always been the same.
The media obviously has a really exciting future. There's going to be an increase in technology, and more exciting is the increase in technology around the world. So people that did not have access to certain media will have more access to media as the years go on. This is just going to increase our connectivity from a global basis and allow people to essentially meet each other, interact that never, ever would. With this technology will come message saturation as well. So consumers of media are going to have to make a more direct choice about what media they're interested in and what not. And one thing that no matter where you are around the world and what kind of media that you encounter and engage, you need to know to make sure your own mind and your own attitudes and your own frame of reference on the world and use the media as a tool for information and not a basis to make decisions specifically on somebody else's thoughts. Use your own mind and have it better your own world and your own life.